If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe so you won't miss any of our new updates. It is Monday morning and you are very angry and you probably wish that the weekend was a little longer because you hate school. Why can't every day just be the weekend? Like, what's the point of school anyway? I mean, that man that sells onions down the road, he studied petroleum engineering and graduated with a 2-1. And yet he is still selling onions. Your discouraged mode is temporarily relieved when you remember that you have your favorite art class next. You really love art and your lecturer is the best at what he does, so as usual, you can't wait for the class. During the class, as you would expect, it's a very fascinating class. The lecturer goes over the history of art in Nigeria and also he talks about the spectacular Benin bronzes and the famous Benin Abri mask. He ends the statement by saying, they are all in England at the moment. Being an inquisitive student, you raise your hand and ask, These are very valuable artworks. Why are they in England? Well, to answer that, let me tell you a little story. Between 1881 and 1914, Western European powers invaded and colonized most of Africa, including the region now known as Nigeria. This was called the Scramble for Africa. The Kingdom of Benin managed to retain its independence. The Oba of Benin exercised a monopoly over trade which the Royal Niger Company found exum. The territory was coveted by an influential group of investors for its rich natural resources such as palm oil, rubber, and ivory. After the British consul Richard Burton visited Benin in 1862, he described it as a place of gratuitous barbarity, which stinks of death, a narrative which was publicized in Britain and increased pressure for the territory's incorporation into the British Empire. In spite of this pressure, the kingdom maintained its independence and after Burton's visit, it was not attended by another representative of Britain until 1892, when Henry Galway, the British vice council of Oil Rivers Protectorate, visited Benin City hoping to open up trade and ultimately annex the kingdom of Benin and transform it into a British protectorate. Galway signed a treaty with the Oba and his chiefs, which gave Britain legal justification for exerting greater influence in the region. Although some historians have suggested that humanitarian motivations were driving British foreign policy in the region, letters written between British administrators suggest that economic motivations were predominant. The treaty was vague and had something like, this is for the general progress of civilization. The treaty granted free trade to British merchants operating in the Kingdom of Benin, but the Oba wasn't okay with any of this. He persisted in requiring custom duties from the British merchants. Since Major Claude Maxwell MacDonald, the Consul General of the All River Protectorate authorities, considered the treaty legal and binding, he deemed the Oba's requirements a violation of the Accord and thus a hostile act. In March 1896, the Oba of Benin ordered a cessation of the supply of all palm privileges to them. The trade embargo brought trade in the Benin River region to a standstill and the British merchants in the region appealed to a protectorate's consul general to open up Benin territories and to send the Oba into exile. In November 1896, Phillips formally asked his superiors in London for permission to invade Benin City, depose the Oba and replace him with a native consul, claiming that the cost of such an expedition would be recouped by ivory which Phillips claimed would be present in the Oba's palace. In late December 18 1996, without waiting for a reply of approval, Phillips embarked on a military expedition with two Niger Coast Protectorate Force officers, a medical officer, two trading agents, 250 African soldiers masquerading in part as porters and in part as a drum and pipe band. To disguise their intent, the force hid its weapons in the baggage carried by the porters. Phillips had sent a message to the Oba claiming that his present mission was to discuss trade and peace and demanding admission to the territory. However, some trading chiefs also sent a message to the Oba that the white man is bringing war. On receiving the news, the Oba summoned the city's high-ranking nobles for an emergency meeting, during which the commander in chief of the Benin army pushed for an ambush of Philip's party. The Oba, however, argued that the party should be allowed to enter the city so that their true intentions could be ascertained. The commander ignored the king's views and ordered the formation of a strike force which was sent to ambush Philip's party. On 4th January 1897, the Benin strike force, composed mainly of border guards and servants of some chiefs, caught Philip's column unprepared at Ubine village near Hukoton. Since Philip's was not expecting any opposition and was unaware that his operation was being perceived with alarm in Benin, the 
Brothers. Only two Brits survived the annihilation of Philip's expedition, which became known as the Benin Massacre. As you would expect, the Britons retaliated on 9th February 1897. The invasion of the Kingdom of Benin began. The British invasion force of about 1,200 Royal Marines, sailors, and Niger Coast Protectorate forces was organized into three columns with fleets of warships and gunboats. On 18th February, Benin City was captured by the expedition. The city was set ablaze. Eight members of the Punity Force were recorded as being killed in action during the Benin expedition. The number of military and civilian casualties amongst the Benin people was counted. The Oba was captured, he was deposed and exiled to Calabar. A British resident was appointed and six chiefs were hung in Benin city's marketplace. Immediately after the city was captured, widespread looting began. Most of the plunder by the city were retained by the expedition with some 2,500 religious artifacts, Benin visual history, memonics and artworks being sent to Britain. They include over a thousand metal plaques and sculptures collectively known as the Benin Bronzes. About 40% of the art was accessioned to the British Museum, while other works were given to the individual members of the armed forces as spoils of war. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. See you in the next video.